Hey, and welcome back to Tell Samira. So today I'm going to talk about how scapegoat daughters of narcissistic mothers can start to heal. I'm going to be honest with you. It is not an easy process. For me, it's been about 20 years in the making. So I'm going to tell you some things along my journey that has helped me. I'm not saying that I'm totally healed. I know I still have work to do. But what I can do is share with you some of the tips that I've learned. And maybe these things will help you out. Now, I look at healing from narcissistic abuse as people look at the five stages of grief. And as it said, that these stages of grief don't all go in the same order. So there's denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then there is acceptance. So I'm going to start off with denial. Some of these things. Some of these may overlap with one another, but just bear with me. Uh, so with denial, it is that I was not uh, really accepting my mom for who she was. I really thought that, that I was loved, that she would do some things that were very evil to me, manipulative, uh, gaslighting me, um, just pulling my strings, just... Um, T taking me everywhere with my emotions, saying things that she would know would uh, trigger me and I would fall for it and she'd be in the back start laughing. <laughs> like, yeah, I got her, I got her. And she even admitted to things like that, which I've shared in other videos. You know, if I did something... Um, if I failed at something, she was happy. She would laugh in front of me. One of those like evil menacing laughs, like, like she was, had been waiting all along for me to fail. Like, oh, you didn't do well in grammar. Ah, ha, ha. You know, those kind of things would just give her a high. And, and instead of me uh, staying away from her, I just kept going back, maybe thinking that something would happen, thinking that this was my mother. You know, people were telling me, you know, oh, all mothers do stuff. You know, they were really minimizing what I was going through. So I learned to stop. I was also in denial of my own feelings, not just in denial of who she was as a person, meaning someone who uh, rejoiced in my downfall, but meaning I was in denial of accepting what I believed to, knew to be true, meaning that something was wrong with this relationship. I wasn't trusting my gut. You know, I was totally just uh, going by what other people's morals told me to do. Oh, it's your mom and you have to stand by. Oh, things will get better. Oh, it can't be as bad as you're saying. Well, all the while, my senses were going crazy. Like, no, Samara, what are you doing? This is crazy. This woman hates you. She's worse than any enemy you've ever had. But I pushed that away. When I joined the um, church, it made it even worse. You know, I went in and poured out my guts and was telling people, you know, I wasn't even living with my mom at the time, but I was still trying to have somewhat of a limited relationship with her. I was about um, uh, finishing up college. I was about maybe 21, 22, and I was telling people, hey, this is what's going on. You know, is it okay if I step away from this relationship? You know, I didn't know the Bible. I was depending on them to tell me what, you know, what, what, what God had me do. And everybody was like, oh, look, my mom used to be that way, but eventually she came to God. And look, she's in the church now. You got to be forgiving. You got to be patient. You got to be this. One um, woman even told me, you know, it's time for you to go live with your mom. You got to show her the love of Jesus. And I'm telling you all that was just utter foolishness, foolish, because they had no understanding of the scriptures. It even scriptures even tell you how to protect yourself against people who are doing wicked things to you. And I learned that later, but me being naive and just totally just denying what I knew to be best. I was just going by what everybody else said because I really wanted to do right in God's eyes. So I thought these people, they've been in church for a long time. They would really know more than me, right? I would, how, how wrong was I? So one of the processes that I know that helps me is when people say know thyself. That used to upset me because I was like, what know thyself? What does that mean? Some cliche, just people just sprinkle it around. Know thyself. Boom. Like that makes it. But what I came to know about know thyself for me means that if I have a feeling, I know that I am in danger. I know something is not right with me. I get these hunches. I am learning to, uh, to trust that process that I know what's right. Instead of saying that something's wrong with me, I can't trust how I feel because that's how I was groomed by my mother. But no, there is nothing wrong with me. I'm no longer in denial about that. I have good instincts. I know 
you know, what's going on and I can trust that. So what I would say, one part of the healing is to accept that you've been in denial about who your mother is, who your narcissistic parent, boyfriend, or anybody was, and that also you've been denial towards yourself. You have to know that you, you know what's right for you. You don't need to watch another video to know you need to end the relationship. You already know within yourself. Because if you're looking for videos and um, Google articles on what to do with narcissists, what should I do? That already lets you know something is wrong and you need to trust yourself, know thyself that you already know something is wrong. You're just looking for outside validation, but really the answer is already within. Uh, another step um, of the process of healing is anger. Having to acknowledge that you are angry. For a long time, I didn't want to say I was angry because I wanted to be this nice church girl and we weren't angry. We were forgiving. We were all these things. But when I really had to realize that I was angry and I had a right to be angry, um, the, a, a mother, like people say, you know, should be there to nourish you, to be there when you fall, to help you want to be the best. And that's not what my mother was. My mother was competitive. My mother is jealous. My mother is full of wickedness, you know, and I know people don't want to say, oh, you can't call anyone evil. But if you haven't lived in a house with evil, then you don't know it. So anyway. So yeah, you have to accept that you are angry. You you probably were not loved, you know, and that's a hard pill to swallow, baby. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's not. That's something that will hurt you at your core. But for me, that was one of the things I had to to deal with that I was angry because I possibly would never get the love I wanted from my mother. I hadn't got the love that I wanted from my mother. She had chosen a golden child over me and another sister who wasn't the golden child, but she still preferred her better than me. And they were not spoken to or had the same um, relationship with her as she as I did with her. So that was the anger, like feeling for a while, like why was, wasn't I the chosen one? Was something wrong with me? But then understanding that that had nothing to do with me is part of the healing process that yes, yeah, okay to be angry, but what am I going to do now that I feel that anger? Am I just going to stay there and just be miserable? Or am I going to transmute that, take that negative anger and flip it around and see how I can turn it into something positive, such as doing a video now. That's for me, it's transmutation, turning that negative into something positive. I also, the other stage of, uh, it's called bargaining. What I look at is bargaining, thinking like, oh, something is going to change. You know, uh, if I just keep going around her and maybe if I be nice to her, she's going to start being nice to me. Maybe if I start showing her the love of God, she's going to be nice to me. It's like I'm doing all these kind of, all this kind of stuff, like a bargaining relationship. Like maybe if I do this, she'll do that. If I do that, then this and this and then that and that and that and that. And it'll change and none of that ever happened. Why? Because anytime I tried to be nice, like the church people were telling me she only took that as a sign of more weakness and just amped up the malicious behavior toward me okay baby she loved that I was trying to be like oh well okay well maybe right I know I'm right the hell you know it was just worse so I'm telling you um it was no bargaining I even tried limited contact I would stop calling her for some mother's days I would forget her birthday and I was doing this to be passive aggressive but I also didn't want to talk to her and just to let her know in a roundabout way that yes I'm upset with you I don't like how you're treating me but none of that worked because anytime I would go limited contact, she would eventually call me back. So Myra, this is your mother. Call your mother back. You know, call. And I'll be like, wait, when I called her, you didn't call me. I'm your mother. I shouldn't have to call you. You're the child even though I was grown, you know? But so those are the things that you're dealing with. There's no bargaining with these people. They're always right. You're always wrong. And they think they're better than you. You're, you're naive because you keep going back to them. This is what they believe, that they're superior and they have this sense of hierarchy that they're at the top, you're at the bottom, you're a fool because you don't understand what's happening to you. And any person that's saying would notice that, hey, this is wrong and wouldn't stop coming back. This is the mind of the narcissist from what I've experienced. And so, yeah, it's like, hey, whatever, you know. Another step on the road of healing is uh, depression, which is normal. And I think it's depression and anxiety. Depression meaning that 
that you realize that you have accepted this kind of relationship for years upon years. You realize that not only may you may realize that not only have you been abused by your mother, that you've been abused by romantic partners, by bosses, and you've done all kind of things, and you've just been a doormat for friends and all other people. That this thing has not only um, been about your mom, but that it has trickled over into other parts of your relationship. So now you may be feeling like, wow. Wow, I was naive. I know I felt that way. You may be feeling, wow, I was dumb. I can't believe I allowed this to happen. I can't believe I said this for all these years. Oh my God, what was wrong with me? That can bring on about that again, that depression, that in, that anxiety. But then that's something that uh, if you want to move on, that you have to accept. Yes, this was a sad situation. It's okay. You weren't loved as um, you wanted to be loved. You know, you probably weren't loved at all. You probably weren't even light that someone you that, um, who should have cared for you was your worst enemy and who had um, didn't do you any good so no nothing was wrong with you which is a big point um, that I had to learn nothing was wrong with me it was wrong with her you know she has a mental illness one that she can control but it's still a diagnosis but anyway so that, that's something that, that that comes with that depression. You know, I'll never have this type of relationship, you know, with my mother. You know, other people may do things with their mother and have them at their weddings and have them a part of their lives. But because of her sickness, I cannot be a part of that. And I don't even choose to be limited contact. It's full on no contact. Another thing I had to do was just accept. Accept means accept her for who she is. Accept that she may never change. One part that Help me um, over um, to start overcoming this was my relationship with God outside of the church and what they were telling me, but my own relationship with God, the God, the God that created the heavens and the earth and the God that dwells within me. So I had to know that those feelings that I was getting that something was wrong, I needed to leave, abandon ship. I know those, I know now that those were only coming from God, that it wasn't just random things, I mean random thoughts that I was having. Like when I first got into church and was dealing with my mom, and I kept wondering what's wrong with her. And one day I was talking to her, it came to my head, she's really negative. And I it wasn't my thought, it came out of nowhere. I'm arguing with the thought, like, what do you mean? What do you mean? But then I thought about it later. I'm like, yeah. She is negative. Then years upon years later, when she really upset me, I think the last time we talked, I was just in my living room and I was just thinking about whatever. And it came to me, your mother's a narcissist. And I'm arguing with the thought, like, what a narcissist? I went to school for psychology. I would know narcissism. You know, I'm arguing and arguing. I started researching narcissism. That's when I found the videos. Then I found out, wow, really in school, they didn't teach us about narcissism at all or really any other personality disorders except for a brief description. But they didn't go into detail about those personality disorders. I was naive just thinking that narcissism was someone who thought the world of them the world of themselves and just kept going on and on needing admiration. But I learned that something it was way worse than that. So um YouTube helped me to accept the situation I was in. You know, after God had told me that, you know, that I had got that in me, that it was uh narcissism i looked up um i found an article by someone named sister renee patilli and she is i believe some um catholic uh Catholic woman or nun and has this narcissism uh, blog and talks about that it's okay to leave and gives you scriptures if you're um, someone who believes in the Bible about why it's okay and that for me was the, a big um, start of the healing for me because I was able to I finally got that validation that just because I um, was someone who believed in the Bible I didn't have to be stupid and fall for those games so that helped me push aside that um, bad moral advice I had gotten from earlier church people that I finally knew that it was okay and that what I had been sensing within me was right all along. So that's what helped me. Then it um, the acceptance, I also found the YouTube videos. I started educating myself. I watched video after video, which I'm sure you did too. But one problem I found is that even though after I got a lot of the knowledge 
of what narcissism is that I didn't really understand how to cope or how to heal. I really felt that a lot of the videos didn't give me that, but eventually I kept searching and I was able to find those videos and even some videos that weren't titled narcissism, just about, um, even this lady who talks about dating, I just liked her because she seemed very confident and she just talked about standing up for yourself in all type of relationships. And I have watched a lot of her videos and got a lot of tips on how to stand up for myself, how to come front people and just how to love myself more. So it, you may not always have to look up a video on narcissism. If you really are seeking, I do believe you will find what you're looking for and it may come in a different form than what you uh, expected. I also had to accept that I, um, since I was not loved, that I had to learn to love myself. One way I did that, like I said, I watched a lot of videos. You may need uh, therapy, but I suggest going to a therapist who understands narcissism because if that therapist doesn't have a proper understanding, they'll try to get you to minimize the um, what happened with you and your parents telling you, oh, well, it's okay and you don't want to hold on to that because it can make you depressed and bitter. And they're really minimizing minimizing you and not understanding on what type of stage you're on on your way to healing because it's a process we're not all at the same stage it, it, and it's not a certain amount of years or just a certain amount of things you can do these are just my tips that may help you but you may find find along your journey that there's different things you need to help you so if you want a therapist or some type of life coach I would suggest that you find someone who has the experience that you have like myself if you look in the description you'll see that you can book appointments with me if you like my energy and think that maybe I can help you uh, along your journey. But if even if you don't go with me, you have to get someone who understands trauma uh, because you're probably dealing with a, a bunch of uh, a trauma and just regular therapy is not going to be helpful to you because you got to learn how to love yourself, build yourself back up again. Also books. Um, I, I had to get a lot of books, like I talked about in previous videos on Robert Greene, about how to be ne less naive, because one thing I had to learn is that I had been naive, not just with my mom, but with friends, with bosses, and letting bosses talk down to me a few times, just because I feared losing a job, and you know, and those are things I had to deal with, is that I had to work on my relationships with all people, so building up the skills to be bolder, to be more assertive, that does not come easy, it comes comes with one situation after another situation where you're making yourself be assertive no matter how scared you might feel in that moment you might fear what they're going to say or do they may not like you you may lose your job you may get written up but that's the point of learning just to be so bold that you're like whatever happens happens but at the end of the day if I got my self-respect that's all I care about and by the way if um, we're not done yet but if you have not liked Please like this video. Make sure you give a comment. Any other suggestions on topics you'd like me to hear, um, to discuss. And make sure you share this video. And uh, like I said, leave a comment as well. But yeah, so get books on how to be less naive. Robert Greene, 48 Laws of Power. Because you've been duped in the past, so you don't want to keep being duped. You have to realize you may have been naive, and you got to get yourself out of it. Also, uh, yeah, just self, just self love and being patient with yourself. So again, like, subscribe, and comment. I hope this was uh, helpful to you, but these are just my steps. Have a good one. Bye.